This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Wow. Ah, you can't see me yet, but I can see you, and you'll see me in about a half hour from right now when I talk to the Citizens Panel. Uh, we go on till midnight, Eastern Daylight Time, and right now it's almost six minutes past 10 o'clock on the East Coast of the United States. So if you're listening to us somewhere in the world and you wonder if we're live or not, just adjust for the time and you'll be able to tell whether we're here or not. We've got a guest, though, and uh, we should get to them right now. Ladies and gentlemen, it is his presence, his ominence. His ominence? His eminence. <laughs> the uh, king of sad comedy, <laughs> Mr. Know-it-all, Larry Bubbles Brown. <laughs> da, 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 da. How you doing, Larry? How's it going, buddy? Yeah, it's going, going okay. I guess we should always start off with our latest physical ailments. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How, how, how's your health? Uh, I've got uh, I got to see the doctor about this. I, I, I can... I can hear my heart beat in my right ear. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. So I, so I looked online. It's called pulse, pulsative tinnitus. Yeah. And it can be caused by either a blockage in the carotid artery or some things that are less serious. Well, of course. So I, now, how did you if, fi- I, wait if I get silent, it probably means wait, I've had a stroke. Wait a minute. So. How did you find that out? I'm just sitting there. I'm going, why am I feeling my no, heart? No, but how did ear? you find out that it was uh, tintinitis of the carotid artery? Well, I looked. I looked. You up, looked uh, it I, up. I googled. Uh, I googled the uh, heartbeat in the ear, and it had a bunch of crap on there. Uh, I do the same thing. I Google everything. Lately, I've been googling uh, esophageal cancer. Oh, I'm scared of that too. Yeah. So, uh, <clears throat> because I was having a little bit of trouble swallowing. So uh, it, the question is, who's the worst hypochondriac, you or me? And I think we're, I, pre- we're up there pretty high. <laughs> I I think that we are both nuclear in this respect. You know, well, esophageal is a. I know someone that had that. It's not a uh, not a pretty uh, surgery. Uh, it, well, it's not a pretty surgery, but uh, uh, you see, what it is is when somebody has something, I then think I have it. Yeah. Um, Woody Allen used to have a joke in his act when he had an act. And he said that I, uh, you know, I I felt I had something. I was having a cough or this or that. He said, but I also, I don't like going to doctors, but I had a friend who had the same exact thing. So I sent him to the doctor to find out what it was. <laughs> and he died of, he, <laughs> and it said he died of cancer. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> people don't un- people don't understand hypochondria, and uh, I don't know that I do a hundred percent. Um, but uh, it, who who's the guy that did swimming in Cambodia? Um, oh, um, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, yeah, yeah, the guy that uh, committed suicide. Yeah, Spal- Spalding Gray. Spalding Gray had him on the show, and I was talking to him about. Every time I go on a vacation, there is a panic that sets in about a day before I go on vacation. And that panic is, am I going to make this train at this time? Is the bus going to leave at this time? Am I going to make it to here when I've got to be there? And blah, blah. And I just absolutely drive myself nuts with it. And Gray said, I do the same thing. He said, I, I you know, I, I every little thing that could go wrong, I stress over, even though it probably won't go wrong. I mean, I was going to the Alps for the Olympics, right? And then I was supposed Mm -hmm. to meet my girlfriend in Paris, and I was supposed to take a train at a certain time, and it was supposed to meet another train, and I was obsessing over this, whether I would make the train in time. And Spalding Gray said to me, you know what it is? He says, I have it, you have it. It's... Uh, uh, what do you call it? You're a control freak. 
I said, well, how do, what do you mean? He said, you want to think up everything that can go wrong so when it does, you're prepared for it. Hmm. So I think the same thing holds true with hypochondria. We always think the worst because yeah. then when it isn't the worst, we feel good. And if it is the worst, we went, aha, I knew it. Yeah, if you expect the worst, you're never disappointed. That's true. And you're not surprised. And so we're, we're control freaks. That's why we're hypochondriacs. My wife hates me for it. My wife just, it drives her batty. She can't understand it because she goes to doctors every week. She, this is her social life is going to doctors, right? If somebody isn't poking a tube down somewhere or shoving something up or hoo-ha, she isn't, hasn't had a good week. <laughs> and women are like this. Women don't mind going to the doctors, you know, because from being, since they were a little girl, somebody was sticking something in their pussy. Right? <laughs> Guys don't want to go to doctors. We hate doctors. We don't want to go to doctors. Uh, doctors only terrorize us. And so uh, she doesn't understand my hypochondria. She can't live with it. And every day I've got something else. Oh, i got a sore throat. Oh, my. I think I've got esophageal cancer. Uh, you know, and uh, my wife, my ex wife, uh, Ronnie, who I don't think you've ever met. No. Uh, my second ex-wife. I have to give them a number. Uh, in fact, once she, she, when we broke up, she said, "You know what? You never did. You never engraved my in, my re wedding ring, like you said you were going to." And I said, "Well, it's because I couldn't figure out what I wanted to put in the engagement ring, or in the wedding ring, uh, that would fit in that amount of size and a sentiment that was a good sentiment, you know." And I said, but I did come up with one finally the other day, and it's just too bad you're breaking up with me. And she said, what was it going to say? And I said, number two in a series. <laughs> but anyway, Ronnie, who I've since made up with, uh, came down with uh, a pancreatic cancer. Ooh. And they gave her this operation. It's called the something or something method because... They they found that you know she was quali she qualified for it because the the cancer hadn't invaded the pancreas that immensely, and uh, she had the operation. And I finally got to talk with her because for a couple of weeks she didn't want to talk to anybody. You know, she had, they literally sliced her open like a carp. They they take out the part of the pancreas that has cancer. They take out the lymph nodes. They take out part of the stomach. They take it, it is. It, there's a lot, a lot of stuff going. The gallbladder, forget it, gone. Um, and I said to her, Gee, uh, you know, thank God for you and your illness. And she said, why? I said, because it makes mine look so silly. Mm -hmm. You know, and really, if you think about it, when you think about the people you might know who've had horrible cancers, right? The yeah. fact that we obsess about stuff that we don't even know what it is. Uh, is ridiculous. And the way we can solve it is by going to the doctor and finding out it's nothing, but we don't do that. Or do you? Uh, I try to avoid the doctor at all costs, but the, the, the trouble, the worst thing for the hypochondriac is the Internet. Because you just go on and find all these horror stories. Well, it always says here are the here are the uh, symptoms, and uh, here are the symptoms, here are the possibilities of what it is, Okay. And and one of them is always cancer. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I don't care if you put in there, I'm sneezing a lot. One of the answers will be cancer. Exactly. Because they're not taking any chances. They don't want to get sued. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? You know, if you have any of these symptoms, go see your doctor. <laughs> yeah, sure. So I can make him more money. You're right. And now, and now most doc if you notice what most doctors do now, uh, well, yeah. it, it looks like you're okay, but, you know, we have a little problem here or there, and why don't you take another test in six months and come back and see me? They always say in, they have some excuse of why in six months you should come back and see them because they need that because they're not making enough money off of you with one visit. Mm-hmm. So, you know, like I have a prostate thing where my uh, PSA went up a, about a point and uh, my urologist said, well, it's still not in the danger area. 
He said, or where we should be concerned about it, because at your age, it can go all the way up to six or something like that. He said, but let's take another one in six months and have a look at it then and see if it's done anything more. And I'm going, yeah, it's six months. That's about what they tell us to do, right? And so then we have mm-hmm. to go to the doctor and we have to get the uh, the blood test. And, and now you can't even get blood tests at your uh, your doctor any longer, you know. Uh, because um, uh, you know, I just uh, um, uh, you know. Uh, Everybody's got to make money on it, so they send you to another place. And yeah, I just got a note from. I was just looking at something. I just got a note from my business manager Gary, who wrote me and said. Uh, in case you wonder about the source of the big deposit that will be made later today, see attached. And then when I see the attached, here's what the big deposit amounts to. Uh, wait a minute, hold on a second. Let me let me get it out here. It's from Verizon, and it's a tax rebate uh, from Verizon for six dollars and eleven cents. <laughs> Is it even worth the postage? <laughs> Barely. You, you know, I mean, I'm on a fixed income, and the money is starting to, you know, get smaller and smaller. Uh, but the six dollars and eleven cents is fuck you money. You know. God. So, but anyways, we were saying about doctors. So you know, so I don't know. I get to the point where I go, why should I go to a doctor once a year, get a checkup, and be terrorized? And then my yeah. wife says, well, you have to get a baseline. You have to find out. What, she has all these terms. You have to have a baseline so that you know what's good and what's bad and blah, 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 blah. And I'm going, Jesus Christ, you know. I just, I, I you know, who needs it? Who needs it? And I go to my doctor every year, and I, I come away terrified on some level. Like he said, my cholesterol jumped amazingly. Went like th- to 300 or something like that. I don't know. Really, yours was always low. Well, uh, and, I'm, and I'm taking statins. And then I noticed about, I don't know, a month ago or something like that, when I was sorting out my pills for the month, that I had an extra bottle of the statin. And I think for that month I forgot to take it. <laughs> you know. I'll do it. <laughs> uh, yeah, and that will do it, right? So I, I don't know, <laughs> you know. So I... So anyway, so so do you, what do you feel is the source of your hypochondria? I mean, do you do you know what the reason for it is? Bad childhood, something like that? Maybe it's like you, the good theory you got about the control freak. I don't know. It's just uh, I just want to avoid pain. So I'm worried about. I think I'm more worried about the pain than I would be about dying at this point. Well, I'm. I've, I've death has always. I've had, my greatest fear in life has been death. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, it just doesn't make any sense to me. I mean, how do you exist but not exist? And do you know you're not existing? No, because I don't believe in the God thing and all of that crap, you know. So what happens? I mean, what what is the 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 existence of not existing? Get what I'm saying? And and that's my greatest fear. And also the uh, the hard part is getting through it. Death is this long relief from everything, okay? But uh, going through it is, in many cases, suffering. You know, so I, uh, you know, so I've always had this great fear of death, and yet I've never been able to go to religion to feel calmed about it because I just I'm not that way. I don't believe in in. We don't. We don't believe in fairy tales. We don't believe in fairy tales. So, uh, uh, you know, if I knew, hey, there was a better life, you know, I'm, I keep looking. I keep looking in science. Um, like, you know, string theory and stuff like that, you know, and that there may mm-hmm. be many different dimensions we exist in, and they're all co- uh, going along with each other. And maybe uh, in another dimension, I still exist even after I die. That, that's a possibility, if you believe what the scientists say about, 
I think something like 12 different universes that we live in. And I don't know if we're living the same exact life. God knows, I hope I'm not in all those other lives. <laughs> when I wouldn't want to go through this another 12 times. Yeah, but that, that and, I, I, and hell could very well be that space between those dimensions, those 12 different dimensions, um, the space between them, and you get stuck in those, and that's hell. You know, I mean, who knows? I mean, I would like to think there's a scientific answer. The scientific answer probably is you become mulch. So I think that's it. Yes, maybe we're. It could yeah. be we're in hell now when you think about so it. So you don't have a fear of death, though. Uh yeah, I got a fear, oh, but okay. I got. I think I more of a fear of uh, of a life, long, drawn out death. <laughs> I don't want. I was going to say I you don't want bigger... one of these things where they're treating you for cancer for three years and just. Well, my my as I say, my ex-wife went through this this operation for pancreatic cancer, and uh, it's. It literally, I mean, they gut you like a carp, right? And the recovery is very slow and 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 uh, painful and, you know, not good, okay? No, no. And then they find like three lymph nodes that had cancer in them, so they don't know if it spread or not. They don't think it did. They think they got it, but they're going to give her chemotherapy, all right? So knowing all of this, I'm going, if this happened to me, would I want to go through all of that? Exactly. And I asked her. I said, you know, you're really very brave to go through all of this. And she says, I had no choice. I said, why? I said, if you don't do it, you'll be dead in six months. Okay, so you, I guess you roll the dice, okay? But if, in fact, it doesn't work or if, in fact, you still have the thing, do you want to spend the last years of your life being cut up like a carp constantly. And I've had friends go through this. I had a friend die of lung cancer. And it was one lung cancer operation after another until they had no lung left and goodbye. You know? <laughs> well, the last, what, four years of his life were a living hell. You know, yeah, it's not worth it, is it? Well, what do you do? What would you do? If suddenly you're confronted with pancreatic cancer, what would you do? And they told you they could operate on it, and there might be a chance you could survive. I think I'd just check out. Really? Yeah. You think the expiration date is coming? I'll, you know. Yeah, it's coming. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to be cut up like a carp. That's like you were saying. It's horrible. By, by the way, uh, I get a lot of letters from people saying how really life-fulfilling our discussions are. <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> you know. I read that 60% of lung cancer victims are non-smokers. So. Well, I, it, it, how about the pollution out there? Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, they used to say that in New York City, although they've cleared up the air here quite considerably, that the air, when I was living here, was the equivalent of smoking two packs of cigarettes a day. It is cleaner now. It is cleaner now. And what I read today, this is a this is an interesting little thing. Let me go to my phone where I have it. Um, it says, wait a minute. Uh, let's see here. No, where was it? It it just said there was something about cancer uh, among young people under fifty getting rectal cancer people under 50 yeah. it's on the rise under 50 and they can't figure out why and i just say there's probably a lot of ass fucking going on i don't know <laughs> you don't want that one <laughs> rectal cancer well yeah, colon cancer that's what they say colon cancer it isn't rectal well okay it's got to be uh it must be diet wouldn't it? well it could be diet it, it, it you know it could be all this health food people are eating now that could be it. You know, maybe your body just can't take, uh, you know, kale. <laughs> that was uh, my favorite uh, Letterman uh, years ago. I remember when the uh, oat bran was supposed to stop cholesterol and everything. And they had headlines in the future, oat bran, the silent killer. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, you know, we don't know this. You know, I mean, what what happens? It, it, it could be that long after we're gone, somebody comes up with a statistic and they find out that uh, kale causes cancer. Sure. You know, or that buying all your foods at Whole Foods, right, uh, it causes cancer. That uh, here, Here's what I honestly believe. I think things that are bad for you are actually helpful to you because they make your body stronger. I mean, if you're like there a vegetarian... There is some truth to that, yeah. If you're a vegetarian, you're a health food freak, you have one hamburger, you're dead. All right? Uh, you should do all the stuff that's bad for you. Because here, I, I, let, me, let me mention this to you. I have a guy I just met who's a Auschwitz survivor. Well, actually, seven, 11 uh, concentration camps he was in. Right? He's, eight, he's 87 years old right now. Uh, his name is Jack Garfine. He directed a couple of films. He was a Broadway director, and he worked for the... Uh, he was part of the actor's studio. And uh, But at the age of 13, he wound up in concentration camps and was treated brutally for a period of about four years till the camps were liberated. And yet he's lived to be 87. I wonder if we went back and we looked at, like, concentration camp survivors what the mortality rate is among that group of people. And I bet we might find that they live longer because their body went through such pain and suffering that it became stronger as a result. Does that make sense? Yeah, he's a tough son of a bitch now, right? He, uh, he, well, I mean, he became a tough son of a bitch. He was always outspoken all his to, life. He had to get through that, so now he's 87, sure. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, uh, you, you hear about a lot of these uh, concentration camp survivors, and they're like in their 80s. They'd have to be now, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, well, I mean, how many of them are there left? You know, I would say Jack is probably one of the few remaining. You know, he told me this was scary. He was at Auschwitz, and he had to be examined by a doctor. Guess who the doctor was? Mengele? Yep. Wow. And I said to him, I said, you know, you've told me all these stories about how your best friend was Marilyn Monroe and how you gave James Dean his first acting job, and how you hung out with Brando and you hung out with Kazan. And you, hung, you know, he hung out with all these people. And it's very impressive when he tells you these stories about his show business life. I said, but the most impressive thing of anything you've told me is that you actually look Mengele straight in the face. He said, yeah, and he, he, he patted my cheek. Because I was, because like I was, guy. I was thirteen at the time, and he uh, he asked me how old I was. I said I was sixteen because I knew if I said thirteen, they'd send me off to the, you know, something else, right? Mm -hmm. Otherwise, they put me on a work detail. So he said, uh, uh, I told him I was I was sixteen, and he patted my cheek again and said, "Okay, go stand over there, young man." He met Mengele. Ow. This guy needs a movie about his life. Oh, they're doing document. They're doing a documentary about him right now. You know, then he came to the United States and became a major, famous director. So, I mean, but I'm just saying that I think that that experience could very easily have been an experience that, um, uh, you know, made him stronger as a result. Who knows? You know, four years. Four years. I would say four years. It was 13, I think it was 17 when he got liberated, yeah. Unbelievable. So, you know. So uh, it, all I'm saying is is that if you eat a lot of meat, maybe you're strengthening yourself against certain things rather than causing stuff to happen, you know? Mm -hmm. And that I, I think all these people, do you ever see people who are like uh, health food freaks? They all look like they're pale and dying. <laughs> Well, they're not getting enough protein in many cases, then which I, you can get through a vegetarian diet, but you have to, it requires a little more. Well, planning. I don't know why they always felt that that was so healthy for you, you know? I mean, doesn't, I never would eat anything that grows out of the ground. They, animals shit in it. <laughs> you know, and they grow this stuff in cow shit, you know, so what, what, are, you, what are you making a big deal about it for? Well, it is true. The uh, most cases of food poisoning now come from uh, vegetables. Really? 
because the uh, fields are so dirty now, and they, like the workers yeah. are pissing and going to the bathroom in the field. Yeah, and, and people, you know, people are going to Whole Foods where a coli could run rampant if it wanted to. E. coli's all over, yeah. And, and I don't get Whole Foods. I mean, they sell meat, <laughs> you know. They sell all the things that are supposedly not good for you, but, you know. It's owned by Amazon now, anyway. Now, so. Amazon's going to own the world, and there'll be uh, yeah. five five minimum wage workers in a warehouse. Well, I have sad know. news for you, Bubs. Yeah. We've run- time, this- time has just flown with this optimistic uh, discourse. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we'll do it again next week? Sounds good. Ladies and gentlemen, the ever-popular Larry Bubbles Brown. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Well, hello, everybody. How are you? I'm Alex Bennett. This is the uh, Ramble, and uh, uh, we're uh, going to now close on, uh, let's see here and there, close that out, bring up the Skype, uh, open up the Skype so people can call us with the Skype thing. Uh, yeah, there we go. What? Oh, it makes a little sound now. Oh, that's that's interesting. Anyway, if you are, uh, if you got your Skype open, you notice that we are uh, um, uh, agreeing, I guess, on your on your thing. And uh, I I I bet the first guy calling tonight is Mike. He always is. But uh, anyway, uh, there are several ways to get in touch with us, and the easiest way. Uh, is to go over to gabnet.net, and at gabnet.net it says what we are, uh, how you can do it. It gives phone numbers there. If you just want to use the phone, it tells how to do it on Skype. It even has a little call button on that page that if you have Skype open and you click on that, it will automatically call us. So all the uh, whatever has been taken out of, all the, all the trouble has been taken out of doing it, okay? All right. Anyway, we have, I told you Mike would be the first one to call. Uh, Let me see here. Let me get rid of that. I want to get rid of that logo. Okay. All right. There we go. Okay. Hello, Mike. Hello there. You got all your problems solved today? Uh, Obviously. Yeah. You know, you've got to do a favor for me, and that's move that microphone away from you a little bit because you're so loud. You're so overpowering. You might okay. you might move it down below down to your chin in that area. All now, right, how's that? How's that right there? Yeah, that's a lot better. Yeah, because some people have uh, their their uh, microphone set on stun, and uh, that's not good. Oh, hey, look who's calling! Uh, Scott Boddicker. Uh Scott is usually always the first one. Scott, are you there? Oh, yeah. there there he is. Yeah, Scott is usually the first one to call, but. Uh, Mike beats Mike, you. you know, Mike beats you to it now, I guess. He's always beating me. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. How you doing today? Still alive. Still alive. Yeah. The uh, the nuclear devices haven't hit your neighborhood yet. Nah, still got global warming, but hey. Uh, <laughs> maybe soon. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, a friend of mine, David Feldman, posted a po- something today, and Feldman's very rarely been funny lately, but. He did say that uh, Donald Trump says he knows n- really nothing about global warming, but he lo- knows a lot about nuclear winter. So, uh, oh, yeah. okay, you good. know, good. Yeah, well, he, he, yeah, it's good that that would cancel out. Like I said, cancel out global warming. I think all, so. all, all the all the talk today. Uh, if you went around from station to station, was this whole thing about Trump and uh, and his little uh, gaff about? Uh, well, we're going to get you. And then, uh, 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 oh, and hell, I mean, we got uh, Rob, and now we got Phil. Boy, we're we're filling up fast here. Filling up yeah. fast. Get it? We're filling up fast. Oh, that's a real smart one. <laughs> yeah, I gotta well, I gotta change my uh, picture here and make it a little smaller because I'm I'm jutting into your picture, Phil. Until oh, other well, people call, yeah, then I can make Facebook. myself larger. Uh, oh, not on. Uh, not on the uh, Skype. What do you mean, not on the Skype? Oh, no, no, Skype. that has nothing to do with Skype. Skype's on a different camera, you know, uh, than the one that's on the air. This is the one on the air. This is the one you're seeing. Right? I see. You see. Well, I'm back. You're back? Yeah? Yeah. 
you got and back. I, I, I got on. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The Scots chagrin. Yeah. So did you enjoy your rug convention? <laughs> what? What? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, you know, uh, Salt Lake City is, um, I guess it's a, it, it, it must appeal to skiers or something, but the uh, downtown area is pretty far away from the mountains. You can see the mountains, but I, I just don't see, uh, it's not my you favorite You act place. like you're the first person to ever go to Salt Lake City. This is my first trip to Salt Lake City. And? and hopefully my last. Yeah. Well, it's, it's Salt Lake City. I mean, it's uh, it's uh, it, 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 yeah, they they're Mormons up there. That's yeah. Uh, you know, some of the people were saying, "Oh, we went out to dinner last night, and we couldn't get reservations, and we 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 ended up in a restaurant, but it was a no no liquor restaurant, so nobody could get a drink because it's uh, Mormon country. And the town's boring too in that respect. But <laughs> here's the thing. Here's the thing. Uh, do you mm -hmm. know, uh, let me ask you a little trivia question. Number one, what is the second largest Mormon populated uh, area in the United States? Because originally oh. it was going to be the Salt Lake City for Mormons. It was going to be the Mormon is city. It, is it Ogden? No. No, then I don't know. Hold on to your Las seat. Vegas. You, absolutely, you're absolutely right. Mike gets the point. Las Vegas. Oh. Las Vegas. Circle, circle gets the square. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> Las Vegas was the first, uh, uh, was going to be the home for the Mormons, oddly enough. And then they went up and they found Salt Lake City, and that was great. But the reason why you have a Mormon population, large Mormon population in Las Vegas, is when it came time for all these crooks to hire people to wa watch the uh, casinos, they decided on hiring nothing but Mormons because they were brutally honest they wouldn't steal from them and so you know, all the pit bosses and all the people who were managers of the casinos and so on were all mormons it's yeah. funny you know all the mormon encounters that i've had in the bay area mm -hmm. especially ones that have worked for me uh drink smoke and curse <laughs> well that's because they got out of salt lake city and they they got to do what they wanted to do with their lives you know yeah well, uh, you know, this morning uh, we had a breakfast at 6 a.m., and uh, there were three gals there all speaking Spanish to one another who were the servers. Mm -hmm. They were blonde. <laughs> you know, it was... Uh, it was you don't was think made... there aren't blonde Spanish women? Oh, yeah, but it was just because Salt Lake City, everywhere I walked, there were families, blonde hair, four or five blonde-haired kids in tow, and uh, you know they were walking around, and they didn't seem drunk. Yeah. So. Have you ever been? You ever been to Salt Lake City, Scott? Yes. And uh, what yes. did what did you think of it? Well, we just kind of. I think we flew into the airport, and then we rented a car. Or we went skiing up in Park City. It's only like. A, you know, 30, 40 minutes up into the mountains. It's not that far, so it, but it's very nice, very nice. Yeah. I, I mean, I could retire to that area. It's, it's very pleasant. Yeah. I know some of the uh, some of the attendees got in early and took a car to Park City, and they said it was very, very nice. But, oh, it's beautiful up you know, the there. downtown area. You know, yeah, uh, it could have been any 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 town USA. How about you, Rob? You ever been to Salt Lake City? No, never been I went through it, and when I got outside of Salt Lake City, uh, it wasn't the Great Salt Lake, but it was another Salt Lake, okay? And we went out, and it is it is amazing that you can actually walk on water. That's really oh, what that you're dense? doing. The salt is so dense that you're walking on water. Mm. So, may I be yeah. your new Christ? Yeah. <laughs> you know. And, you know, I guess on the salt flats, uh, they uh, they have time trials for cars and things like that because yes. uh, yeah. it, it's it's so flat. Yeah. It, it's so flat. Do you know what the, the largest land mass, though, is in the United States of, of that you can drive from one end to the other, and it's the longest land mass in the United States? Texas? Nope. Nope. It's in Nevada. Huh? Oh, really? It's the Black in Rock. De it's a Black Rock yes. Desert, in Nevada, where they hold Burning Man. You, now that's, you that's can drive long from long. one end of it to the other, forty yeah. miles, and not hit wow. anything. Oh, I did it one night. Turned off. Uh, uh, we, we we drove 
from one end of it, because this is in the early days of the uh, Burning Man, so we could go around the Burning Man. Mm -hmm. But we started at one end and tried to go to the other without turning on our headlights on a completely dark night, but it was too scary. Even though we knew we would not hit anything. <laughs> and they hold a lot of car trials out there. Hi, Brian. How you doing this evening? Hello. Where are you driving to? Home? Yes. Home to whatever he's going to eat tonight. Uh, uh, maybe, maybe not. Maybe, maybe not. Oh, well, he'll surprise us when he gets there. Uh, More than likely, if anything, I, I, well, I can say with 100% certainty almost that uh, I will be drinking something when I get back. You will be drinking something when you get back. Do you drink often? Well, uh? Whether it's an adult, well, it's not necessarily an adult beverage, but uh, I get thirsty quite yeah. a bit. I'll tell you what, you know what we did tonight? Sure. What we did tonight? Uh, we sell a girlfriend and I went to uh, Bobo's. Happy anniversary? It was, a, yes. It, well, you see, here's the thing. It, it's not our anniversary. How many anniv years? It's not our anniversary. But she has created several full anniversaries based upon the courting process. Mm hmm and this was the anniversary of our first date. So she calls up the restaurant and says, I want uh, reservations, uh, we're celebrating our anniversary. So everything is like, happy anniversary, welcome to Bopos. Uh, well, uh, happy anniversary, here's your, here's your dessert with happy anniversary written on it. And I'm Freak. just feeling guilty as hell because it's such <laughs> a fucking lie, you know, and uh, she goes, I, I go, I, I, she says, you, you want some of my dessert, don't you? And I said, no. She says, but it's our anniversary. I went, no, it's not. It's the first, it's the anniversary of our first date. It's not the same thing, okay? Oh, I don't know about that, Alex. I mean, uh, Julio Iglesias is known for having, for celebrating his, his birthday, the birthday he perceives as being the day he was conceived. So perhaps some would argue that, uh, uh, a first date would constitute in and of itself an anniversary. Well, she said we need an excuse to have a, 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 a go out to a really nice restaurant and be festive. And I said, no, you don't. Just book a reservation at the restaurant and say, here's our great meal we're going to have. You know? This place is owned by uh, Lydia Bastianich and her son. Uh, I can't remember his name. And uh, oh, we lost... Uh, uh, OBS studio was re, uh, went down and was reconnecting. Hey, that happens occasionally. Oh boy, yeah, I got a problem. I got a problem here. Let's see here. Perfectly, oh. as long as you can live as long together as long as you have without killing each other, it's a victory in my book. So. Yeah, uh, Brian, uh, yes. are you are you feeling uh, thirsty uh, because uh, you're you're parched and dry and uh, you're really thirsty? Or, or you want booze? No, I'm just really thirsty. Uh, I, no, think, I, sold, I seldom drink. Well, then I think you ought to get your uh, sugar checked because that's one of the symptoms of diabetes. No. Oh, really? And, yeah. Wouldn't that be lovely? Yeah, well, uh, better you catch it now uh, than it uh, ravages uh, uh, your pancreas. That's for sure, Phil. Boy, yeah. you're, you're, sure, you're sure happy. Yeah, but you know, <laughs> diabetes is, uh, it, it just, it, it rips a person's body apart. Yeah. And eventually they might lose their sight and their, and their legs and, and fingers, toes. Yeah. Uh, and it, one car of the, problems. Yeah, car problems. Uh, but one of the first signs is uh, being very thirsty. And uh, so, you know, Brian, just get yourself checked. Really? Yeah. yeah. When I have the health insurance to do that, I know I will. <laughs> hey, Phil, uh, do you take your diabetes like me? I take my pills. Yeah. Uh, uh, I take metformin and yeah. uh, lipizide. I just take uh, metformin. Metformin's been working for me for the last 10 years. Well, uh, yeah, I, I'm very resistant to what happens is if i eat anything with sugar in it uh i've been testing more lately and uh you know just uh, it doesn't take much for me to drive my sugar up but uh, i don't have that problem with sugar going up my problem what? is sugar going down yeah so 
Then that guy, and then I go, uh, I go, oh shit, they dead for something to eat. Well, that happened to me last night on uh, on Gabnet. Uh, I tested and I was seventy. I knew I didn't feel that good. So. Yeah, that's kind of low, isn't it? Yeah, it's very low. So, don't you test your sugar before you eat like certain parts of the day? I, I test it about four or five times a day. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You have to, you have to, you prick yourself. Yeah. Yep. yeah that's my Well, some people say I'm a prick, but <laughs> I was going to say that, but then I decided not to because I could. Short supply of people who would agree with you there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hello, Kevin. How are you? How are you, Kevin? And uh, hello, Tony. Oh, hi. Yeah. By the way, the people who are watching us on uh, Facebook, I hope you refreshed because for some reason our uh, our thing that uses this to broadcast uh, went down or whatever. But I noticed that by just rebooting, by refreshing your browser, you will the program will continue as was before. So the yeah. week's going fast. What the week's going fast? Yeah, I'm kind of happy. Yeah. Every fucking day goes fast. Did you today. send me a picture of you with boxes or something? That whole bullshit saying it. Oh, oh yeah, I, mean, I, made like, I made cases. You know what's funny? I actually got enjoyment out of their misery today at work. You know why, Alex? They what? they placed an order in May, mm -hmm. and they're still not getting the merchandise. <laughs> so they're like, but Alex, the guy who's making the stuff, he bought the company. So he's always been like overdue by months. I think he's just putting them off. So now they're like crying in the office. I was happy because, you know what, fuck it. I don't want the delivery to come this week. Hmm. I hope it comes like in a month. Fuck that shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I they think should they call come it, another source. The what? I think they, they call it oh, rejoicing in another person's suffering. I think the German uh, word for that is Schadenfreude. Uh, Schadenfreude. Yeah, it is. I mean, that yeah. wasn't like it's old relishing old in, in the in the misery of others. Right. Like we can sit here and have Schadenfreude about you, Tony, because we don't have your misery, and we can kind of feel good about that. Alex, do you think that's bad that I was happy like they weren't getting their merchandise this week? Yes. That's Schadenfreude. That's is that Schadenfreude. Okay? I didn't mean to make Christian. They would look like they were going to cross. What's, what's great about the Germans is is in their language, they actually have words for stuff that we yeah. don't have words for. You well, know, they can like encapsulate. Well, weariness is uh, Weltschmerz. Uh, Weltschmerz. Thank you. Yeah. I was trying Weltschmerz. to make it like I was concerned, but really I didn't care. <laughs> it's like, you know, oh, that's terrible. <laughs> And yeah. then I'm walking in the warehouse like, good. Those 30 yeah. cases ain't coming in this week. <laughs> now, penis in Yiddish is putz. Yeah. But you know what putz yeah. means in German? Is that stupid? Gold. Really? Yes. So the very thing we named our penis was for gold. Oh, that's the trophy. <laughs> and that's why that's, that's why Jews are reviled everywhere they go. As <laughs> we think of our penises as gold. The golden yeah. penis. The golden penis. You know what I was thinking of, Alex, last night? What? When Phil was in that hotel room and he was, and you said he all oh, there was white people in the, uh, he said, oh, there was so many white people there. I remember your hotel room was all white, too, if you look at it. And the, the, angle, the angle of the camera was towards the ceiling. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, Phil, you had an abbreviation, IDT or whatever the fuck you said. Uh, I don't know what it, what that means. It's like LDS. Oh, LDS. LDS. Thank yeah, what you. What is that? Latter Day Saints. Syndrome? I don't know. No. Latter Day Saints. Latter Day Saints. Latter Day Saints. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's probably what you believe in. Whatever. Hey Scott, I'm in Plano next week. What's the weather going to be? Uh, unfortunately, it's going to warm up next week. I believe. Oh, of course. Oh, of course. It's, it's 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 supposed to. It's it's real nice today again and whatnot. I'm lower 90s and stuff, but. Oh. But oh, well, I think it's going to warm up on the weekend, but then it's going to be cooler again on Monday Good. and Tuesday. So yeah, no, it's going to be it'd be, be nice. It'll be nice. I'm hoping. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's good. And that's your weather for t Plano, Texas. Yes. Why? And now, when you go to Plano, Texas, Rob, is it for your little classes and stuff? No, I'm going to be assisting our uh, inside sales reps and teaching them how to ask probing questions to our customers oh, really? because they're the first people who talk to, to the customers and try to get from them, uh, try to teach them how to, how to, how to probe dig. Yeah. How to dig for, uh, for gold. Information. Yeah. How to dig for yeah. gold or schmuck as we, as schmuck. Right. Or yeah. schmuck, right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, or pots, so my, pots. my question to you is, is do you fly there or do you drive there? No. Fly there. How do you fly there? 
I would rather drive there. Yeah. But yeah, I hate flying. What do you take, Southwest? Uh, no, I'm taking American. Mm-hmm. One of the shittiest the, airlines. Yeah, yeah, it's because of the TSA and all the checks they do, checks and all the, the you know, analyzing oh. and all the package inspections they do and shit. I don't have that problem. I have a, I have a global. Yeah, I uh, do too. TSA and, took my shaving cream. Brand shaving cream. Bro. It's coming. It's coming you know what I do? I just ask the hotel for it when I get there. I don't bother with shit like that. Toothpaste, shaving cream. I ask the hotel for it. Yeah. Well, I, um, you know, I have one of those global entry cards as well. Yeah. And uh, uh, I must have entered uh, the wrong number in uh, in the return ticket because I didn't get uh, TSA pre. So I had to take my shoes off, my belt off on the way back. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, I'm spoiled. You know. Oh, you mean you have to take your shoes? I wonder oh, why. No, because we're pre-screened. <laughs> we're pre. If you have that, you're pre-screened. They know who you are. You're a known entity. You don't have to take your computer out of your right. out of your bag. Oh, wow. You don't have to take your belt off. You don't have to take your shoes off. You just right. walk through like it was 1980. You know where right. you don't have to do that? Yeah. China. That? You don't have to do that in China. Yeah, yeah. In China, I traveled within the country. I went to uh, Gulen, and uh, they, they, in fact, they helped me uh, uh, with my baggage. Load up the explosives. Load it onto the onto the onto the. <laughs> what? <laughs> What'd you say, Rob? Rob, I finished your sentence. And matter of fact, they helped me load up the explosives. <laughs> yeah, Rob, yeah, to talk That's about true. the Tiananmen Square, I'm sure they'll change that policy. Remember, they took your radio. They took his radio out. Oh, uh, no, TSA stole my radio. Radio, remember that? Yeah, well, I oh, don't uh, do that. Huh? Yeah, right. I I, uh, I I I had a Sirius XM portable radio. Okay, uh, it was a portable one they made, uh, one that you could walk around with actually. And uh, I had it, and uh, I packed it in my bag, and uh, I I can't remember that I get one of the I think I want got one of the TSA approved locks. So I put that on there, and when I get to the other side uh, and I open up my bags at wherever I was, hotel or whatever, there was no radio to be found. Uh, they had literally stolen from me. Oh, they do. They do it yeah. a lot. Uh, you know, my I gave uh, Faye uh, a watch. It's called an Omega Constellation. It's a really good watch. And... Uh, she uh, uh, flew to uh, she flew to Plano actually, uh, where her sister lives. And uh, when she was at the Oakland airport, uh, she had to put the watch in a little cup, and they send it through. Yeah. Well, uh, she gets to the other side, and it's not there. What? And, and yeah, not there. And uh, she starts crying, and and uh, she she's beside herself because I had given it to her, and. Uh, so uh, uh, they supposedly do a search, and they're, and they're looking, and then uh, like 40 minutes later, they come out of it from the, with their, uh, out of their back room, and they said, is this the, is this the watch? Is this your I watch? The- Ta-da! Because she says, I'm not leaving until the watch, uh, until the watch comes back. You know, I'm, I'm surprised they didn't arrest her. <laughs> you know? Don't but, blame her. Yeah. And, I don't blame her. But uh, I had a... Uh, uh, shaving cream uh, on the way over uh, to Salt Lake that was uh, oh, probably five and a half ounces. It wasn't the big one. It was, you know, the, the, a smaller one, but not the travel one. And uh, they said, oh, it's bigger than three and a half ounces. I said, you're really going to confiscate this? You know, oh, you can go back out and check it in, check your luggage in. I said, you know, so it's $25 to check your bag. And and, and uh, it's two bucks for some uh, whatever kind of cheap uh, shaving cream I use. Yeah. Wow. So I said keep it. Yeah. Well, I uh, uh, hi, Charlene. How are you this evening? There she is. Oh, uh, there was one other thing I wanted to say about Delta Airlines. Yeah. I I saw uh, their screensaver uh, on uh, at the at the. Um, you know, where you get on the plane at mm-hmm. the jetway. And uh, it was uh, Windows XP. So, ah, uh, <laughs> so I took a picture of it in my, in my phone. Uh, I, that, got a, I got something to dovetail that, Bill. 
yeah. uh, what I do in my job. Uh, I deliver. I make deliveries every once in a while to a major bank downtown in mm-hmm. Pittsburgh, and uh, they're the security screening place that you periodically have to be subjected to before you get into the elevator to deliver the credit card statements and other financial documents to that bank. Yeah. And uh, what they have on the screen, it's frozen actually because it really hasn't worked that well, is Windows XP as well. Well, they aren't uh, I understand there aren't any patches uh, or, or security things for Windows XP anymore. They told that you that it's, it's not. As of April 2014, they stopped doing that. Well, Delta. And they also stopped on that for Windows 7 too. Yeah, yeah. D- Delta Airlines is using Windows XP. <laughs> yeah. It is possible. Oh my God. It is possible. America. Big, big corporations pay Microsoft a fuck ton of money to 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 I do patches, that. to do security patches for them. But man, you, you're laying out a lot of money, and why you wouldn't upgrade the operating system before you did that? But. Yeah. So there are a few companies out there that have clout and pay a lot of money to get updates. Well, you think now that, uh, you know, you, I know that Delta is using XP. They can be hacked uh, mm-hmm. and easily. Yeah. Well, maybe they well, can't no, be hacked. Maybe they, they can't be hacked. Rob. Maybe, maybe n- all the hacks are for the newer stuff. <laughs> you know? yeah. Well, in their defense, though, Rob, I would, I, I'm, I would play devil's advocate here in the sense that uh, some a lot of the uh, applications they may use may not be compatible with the newer version newer operating I, systems and may well, not uh, exist for newer I versions. understand that I, I completely understand that but you need to worry about security right so okay. you either need to find new applications or you got to move forward because that's you know you're putting your customers at risk you're putting it every. You're putting everybody at risk. Well, you know they got credit card information. Your ass and get the fuck moving already. Uh, I agree. And and you know this is their ticketing and reservations. <laughs> so you yeah. know that. You wonder why you put your credit card and it gets hacked, it gets stolen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I was. Yeah, that's, speaking of that, it just happened with with me today, this evening, with uh, PayPal. Second time in seven months, some shit dick uh, hacked into my. Uh, 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 checking account via my debit card really hmm. yeah so what are you doing you have to get a new debit card no i just uh, uh close off uh, i just called paypal and they're taking care of it so like, i yeah i had uh, I, but i did take my debit card off the site Pay, so pay- paypal is actually very good with that sort of thing they were seven months ago, and I have every reason to believe they will be now. Yeah, I because I had a, I had a problem where all of a sudden I noticed that I don't know there was something like t- a couple of twenty eight dollar things to a twenty four dollars here. Yeah, some some site in Japan or in the e, 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 in Asia, uh, uh, and and somebody had used my PayPal account to pay for some i don't know video games or something like that so i got a hold of um, i got a hold of face uh, uh, paypal i told them what was going on and they went okay we'll put a hold on those two things and we'll investigate it and they did their little investigation and they said you got ripped off and uh, it, it won't happen again and we've also told the vendor that they have to watch out for this sort of thing and uh they uh, they Listen. refunded my money you know they were very good yeah. about it they, their credit. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, That's yeah. Uh, Mike, what? There's a new scam out now on your computer. Yeah. Now they're using the eight four four telephone number. I get the number here on the phone. He says there is something wrong with your computer. This is uh, some type of security. I go, oh, what's the scam this time? Microsoft. No, it wasn't Microsoft. It was somebody else. No, I had, I had a guy. I, I wait a minute. I had a guy call me up one day. And he goes, yeah. uh, uh, you know, uh, you, you know, you you have tr- problems with your uh, with your computer, uh, so you and and, it and, and, and it's it, it, it's a, it's very easy for people to hack your computer, and in fact, uh, we we're we're able to do it right now. And uh, yeah. do you want do you want to protect yourself against this? Hi, John. And I said, hey. Uh, well, uh, I will if you'll answer me one question. And he said, uh, what's that? I said, what's my IP address? And he hung up. <laughs> well, this one here, though, I told him, says, uh, what's the scam? Says, well, I'm tired of you people scamming people like you, like me. Click. 
they got well, I, I waste their time. I, if, it, if it happened to me once, I waste their time. I make them tell me, yeah, what should I do? Now what should I do? I make them wait their fucking That's what that time. is, right there. That's I did something of, similar to that. I yeah. screwed I, uh, with one for a good half hour. Yep. I don't have that kind of time. Yeah. I said to the one the one that tried to screw with me, I uh, just, uh, you know, I, I roped them along. And, and then uh, after, after like, uh, a few minutes... I turned my computer on just to let them know, just to rope them along. And so after that, I, I told them, okay, here's the deal. You need to learn to speak better English and go fuck yourself. Click. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was Indian one. Hmm? Well, this guy was a Filipino. But wait a minute. When I asked this guy for my IP address, I remember one other thing that happened because it happened a long time ago. He paused, and then he said, fuck you, and he hung up. That was what happened. <laughs> Whoa. No thanks. You're not, you should have said, no a, thanks, you're not my type. I have a police whistle, and uh, <laughs> you know, I blew it into the phone. Uh, <laughs> and <clears> then <throat> the next... Well, the air's out. <laughs> for, yeah, I know. For weeks, I was getting phone calls at, at 5 in the morning, 510, 520, 530, uh, the same guy. Yeah. <clears throat> Mm. And uh, nobody yeah, there. You put your automatic redial there, yeah. Yeah, I couldn't block them either. No. Uh, are, you, are you are you waving your really hand? Wait a minute. Are you waving phone your phone hand, uh, Charlene? Yeah, you know, you guys are talking about those annoying telemarketer calls and things like that. Yeah. Because I saw that uh, it's like ATT and Verizon are going to start an app where you can go in and you can like uh, find out whether it's a scam call or a telemarketer call or. I have even, I'm even uh, that higher thing that uh, yeah that Rob, Rob yeah. took it. That tells me when like a uh, uh, collections is calling me and stuff. You know, <laughs> it's yeah. getting really intense that you can screen. Well, I, I well do, I do I got higher and I got another one called True Call or something like that. And between the two of them, it catches most of them. But the, what it catches is uh, the um, uh, it doesn't stop the call. It just simply. <laughs> Uh, tells you that it's a spam, so you don't answer it. Well, yeah. I would. I would. I would. It's got a setting on it to. You can change the setting in Haya. Really? Oh, yeah. I don't. I let it ring through, but there is a setting in Haya. Let me see. I could. Oh, well, I've got my. Right I've got Somewhere. mine here. You know, my Haya used to used to update incessantly. Every, every, you, know, you, you should. You minutes. should update it every day, actually, by well, hand. It, yeah, it does it on its own. Wait yeah, a second. Like, uh, I but, have more, uh, success, you know, not. more success with Haya on Android than I do with Apple. See, there's one that, see, if you go to the options, there's uh, alert with warning or block, send a voicemail. Where, where do you go? You go to the options. It's the gear on the bottom. Oh, all I the way see. To the okay, right. there's an option there. Okay. Yeah. And it says can, alert with warning. Okay. Yeah. Or alert. block, send a voicemail. Oh, block, send a voicemail. Okay. <laughs> Alert with one, and then I should do that, I guess, huh? Yeah. Do you want to block them? I, I, I block the scams, but I let the suspected spams go through because sometimes I get calls, especially me, because I, I don't want to use my Android phone. Mm -hmm. So what I do is I just have all my calls forwarded to this phone. Yeah. So I can't necessarily tell, and I just, I'd rather just, you know, I'll answer the call if I think it's real. Yeah. Oh. Spook. I feel like such an old fogey with a flip phone here. <laughs> I don't have to deal with that. So, I so you leave suspected calls spam my, calls uh, open because my it might, regular phone. You leave suspected spam calls open because it might be somebody you know. It might be somebody from work. Oh, okay. Because I have I use uh, I don't use my Android phone. Oh, I, I forward see. all the calls to this phone, so I only have to carry one phone. I oh. see. Okay. Well, I, I guess uh, you just solved no, my problem I, for I me. Hate Android. The other one that I have is True Caller, which okay. is again does uh, basically the same thing. Um, notifications, my block list settings. Oh, settings. Let's see if I can do it there. Uh, top spammers. Uh, store as a contact. No. What? Top spammers. Store, be alerted. With a red caller ID background with one of the most reported numbers calls you. Yeah, I guess so. Anyway, uh, so I, I, that's uh, that's pretty much my, uh, I just updated uh, both of them. And, but they are pretty good. I mean, you yeah, know, they are. It, it, 
it, it certainly it's nice that even if you if you have a thing and it comes up and it rings and it says it's a spam call and you don't answer it, the advantage to that is if you don't answer, they don't know you exist. You know, right. they, they probably even their computer just kind of wipes that number your number off because it doesn't it doesn't seem to be a, a viable number. Yeah. But yes, uh, Don't Charlie. Be breathing on the other end. I, I wish Phil had come with his uh, Trump hat with me. Uh, you know, I did a live Facebook. I don't know if anyone saw it, but um, I go to Bridgewater all the time, and I thought Bedminster was Bridgewater in my blondness, but then I found out that it's not that far away, and I went up there uh, like two days ago mm -hmm. to see what was going on over there. Yeah. And and nothing was going on over there. <laughs> Like I, I got near the gate, yeah. and a young gentleman with like white uh, headphones came out, and I knew right away that I had to go because you know the president's there. Okay. Okay. So I pulled Secret out. Secret service. And I think they were in like an old truck or something, and they kind of followed me, like I guess to be sure. You <laughs> Secret know, I was service leaving. doesn't run around in old trucks. <laughs> okay, well there was no security. The KGB. My Facebook friends were going crazy. Is that what was there? There's no security. I don't know. But I thought it was pretty funny, you know. It was like, uh, I just, you know, and then I snuck back up. I walked up so I wouldn't get thrown out. And I went over and uh, just took, you know, all well, it is is a big sign and all that. But, I mean, it's a beautiful area there. Oh, my God. The people there must be, like, millionaires. Yeah. You know, they have, like, mm -hmm. sprawling you know, property. and. <laughs> Oh, yeah. There were herds of deer. Bambi was putting their little tails up in the air, and you know, it was crazy. Well, here's the latest from uh, North Korea. Have you heard it? Oh no! Yeah. I know. Uh, Mattis. Uh, they, uh, they're warming up. up Guam, right? North Korea says it will finish a plan to strike near Guam by mid-August, and will await Kim Jong Un's order to implement it. Yeah. Now, now, let me let me let me first, you know, to begin with, we're dealing with two children here. That's the problem. Okay, no. we're dealing no. with two children, and uh, a big schoolyard. One of the things that Trump did was make Kim Jong Un feel important, just by even threatening him. You know, the biggest nation in the world would be a. Ta I'm, you know, because a lot of these tin horn dictators, uh, like uh, I remember, uh, uh, what was it, Idi Amin. Uh, mm -hmm. thought basically that he was on the same par as the American president, even though he had this little small country, you know? Idi Amin wasn't lobbing ICBMs. Well, no, 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 no. I, I didn't ask your opinion on this one, Phil, because I know what it's going to be. I know what it's going to be. Um, all I'm saying is these are two children who are pretty much uh, uh, yelling at each other and, and saber-rattling, and... Um, the part that I don't get about it, though, he says they're finishing a plan to strike near Guam. What yeah, is near true. Guam? In the ocean? Yeah. Well, and if so, no what? They have what? no accuracy. They don't have a, it's not, you know, they're going to shoot the missile towards it and wherever it comes down, it's going to it come somewhere nearby. <laughs> yeah. what, what did Mattis say today? Uh, did, you, did you hear what he said? Uh, hmm. I heard some kind of palaver, yes. Well, I guess he he was even more heated uh, uh, than Trump was, and uh, so I don't think that Trump is is drawing a line in the sand that he doesn't plan on protecting. But you're assuming he's going to use nuclear weapons against Kim Jong Un, and he, and he never he doesn't have. To wait a minute, wait a minute. What does fire and fury? Like the world has never seen, seem to indicate that that, that, that we're going that we're going to give him we're going we're going to give him a, a, a fix it ticket. Remember shock what? and awe, right? Yeah. Shock and awe. That wasn't nukes. You remember when Trump set off all of those uh, missiles uh, at that uh, base uh, uh, the, yeah. where where they uh, were doing the yeah and didn't kill anybody. Yeah, go ahead. I understand. Yeah. Blew up an overpass. <laughs> Yeah, well, meanwhile, you know, he could even do the same thing uh, to uh, Penang or whatever they call that place. P Pyongyang. 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 Yeah. The capital. Yeah. Well, uh, Phil's you know, speaking town. with great authority about this stuff, but he doesn't even well, know what the capital of North Korea I don't is. Know. Who can pronounce that shit? Pyongyang. It's very simple. Do you understand, Phil, do you understand that if, 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 um, if, if Kim Jong-un 
fires those missiles to Seoul, Korea, they'll have 45 seconds. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So and no and then and then here. if he does that, there is... North Korea will have another 45 seconds. <laughs> well, but the, see what, what we're starting That's here. True. This is not the, the answer is not militarily. We're it's not, not a starting... military answer. We're not starting it. We are you're egging it on. You're putting a fire under oh. Il un, un's ass. He, he, he is told that he either steps down or ends his program. He doesn't have a choice anymore. The world is has, has risen up against him. He doesn't have to do a fucking thing. It's his yeah. country. He can just sit there and saber rattle and 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 feel get his ego stroked every time uh, his name is invoked by uh, by um, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Trump. Trump. You know. Uh, do you think that the people of uh, Korea even know uh, that there's a Mr. Trump? Oh, they certainly do. He does, definitely. I'm sure they do. He just. talks about them all the time on That's local. right. By the way, we now have a full house. Once again, You're assuming they have radios. Once again, we have a full house, by the oh, way. Oh, that's true also, right? They've got those 80-foot <laughs> screens in the main squares that everybody watches. Mm -hmm. It's on a Mobius loop of uh, Kim Jong-un. This yeah. isn't the peace sign. I have sure. two things I wanted to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll take it as a peace sign. But still, hey, no. Peace, brother. Two, two things. Best photo, best Photoshop I've seen today was a picture that was basically saying we we're putting a childproof cap on the nuclear button. Put <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah. the big red button. That was great. Uh, and now I've forgotten the second thing, but it was something, yeah. something of a similar. Well, all myself. I know is that uh, the little tin horn, oh, there you go. little tin horns like uh, uh, Kim Jong Un are. Uh, uh, bent on getting other people to make them feel important. And Trump yesterday made him feel important. Hey, what are the what are the four letters uh, that uh, are the acronym for uh, the North Korean government? It's like EPKR or something? I have no idea. Oh, it's not understanding. Oh, North Korea, P. No, no, it starts with a D. Yeah. Uh, democratic. Dem democratic. Dem yeah, that, that's it, democratic. <laughs> oh, <we see> the <laughs> Democratic People's <laughs> Republic of uh, North Korea. I think yeah, the G word. DPNK or something like that? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Here's a crazy question. Let's yeah. say Alex, he does go through and he tries to shoot some kind of missile near Guam and it goes off in the ocean. What is Trump going to do then, you think? I think shoot it down. Yeah, yeah, we. The, now he's back himself in a corner. These yes. things can be shot. He has down. to do something. These things. He can, look like a man now. He's drawn his guns. Yeah. These I, things. I, 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 I mean, part of me would like to see him call him out on it. I, I don't want to see nobody get hurt though. I almost got in trouble for a similar uh, similar act at the uh, police department when I was in training. They had me up in the 911 room. And I'm answering the phone, and this lady says, she calls up and she says, there are low-flying pilots that are cursing at me. And <laughs> so I said, that, that's mm -hmm. awful. I said, I'll send our plane out and we'll shoot them down. And she said, oh, thank you very much. And she called back a few minutes later, and she says, can I get your name? Uh, and remember, I'm on the 911 recorded thing. <laughs> she, so she says, can I get your name? And I said, well, Lieutenant Bob. <laughs> and she says, oh, I just want to thank you. I've been complaining all of this time, and no one's ever uh, done anything for me. Thank you very much. I was just glad she didn't write the chief. <laughs> would, she, would she live under the Concord Airport there, or what? No, this is Richmond. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, I think Richmond's w w uh, crazy over there. Yeah. It sounds like the chemtrails people. You know? <laughs> well, I don't know. Somebody here last night. There's I think spray, maybe maybe it was Rob. Over us, so all these sheep. Yeah, right. I, th okay. I think somebody last night. Maybe it was Rob said that uh, watch the stock market today. It was going to go down like crazy. It did. It, it, it really did. No, it didn't. It, did go down. It, it really didn't go down that much today. But it, it did yesterday. It was up high yesterday. Then yeah. it, then it took a dive down towards the end of the day. But yeah. But yeah, it, it's steady, isn't it? Everyone in the world knows Trump's a nut, so who cares? Yeah, but, you know, uh, this has created a great deal of fear among Americans. And among maybe people, you. and, and, what? Maybe you and, 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 uh, and, and your Trump-hating friends, wait a minute, but not wait, me. Wait, 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 wait. 
Uh, you, you didn't let me finish. Uh, you know, I, I no, I'm not fearful about this. I am, I am, I am fearful. Oh, I'm fearful that Trump won't act in a in a, a good manner because he's not a professional, not capable, and he's not capable. But uh, uh, I think we have far more things to worry about with Trump uh, than than this issue <clears throat> alone. Okay, global warming being another one of them. Uh, well, not if not if Scott's theory is correct. Yeah. If Scott's theory is correct, nuclear we don't have to worry winter? about, yeah, nuclear winter, there won't be any global warming. Or, may, <laughs> or maybe, maybe it'll be, nu maybe when it's going in the dark, that's all. Well, well, maybe, maybe nuclear winter will happen in the north and uh, global warming will happen in the south. I don't know. Yeah. Or maybe, go. maybe it'll reverse itself. Oh, boy. We all moved to we all moved to South Africa. Maybe yeah. the two extremes will balance each other out. Who knows? Exactly. I think so. That's my theory. That's your theory, oh, and, I'm, and you're sticking by it, and I'm with you. <laughs> can you all hear me, by the way? Yes, I can hear you just fine. Okay, good. That's unlike yesterday. Yeah. 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 So uh, well, Trump's people are saying not saying you can't call it climate change anymore. They have like they have other euphemisms that are that are so obscurely trying to explain. Well, you know, variations in 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 temperatures it's like yeah, they come up with yeah right <laughs> it's, it's a like climate trump. adjustment so i can't call uh trump tiny hands anymore i can call him diminutive digit douchebag maybe i don't know that, but that's <laughs> possible it's a douchebag period that's possible yeah yeah uh but douche. guys are all very disrespectful yeah why uh, all, fuck you uh, fuck you who oh, the hell who <laughs> I do you notice I never call I him. I never call him. I, I never call him President Trump because that seems like an oxymoron to me. I, I don't. I don't, I don't call him that either. Yeah, I. I can't bring myself to call him President Trump. If I call him president, it's usually followed by the words "pussy grabber." And and if he <laughs> and if he ends up uh, eliminating the threat from North Korea, uh, what are you going to call him then? If he ends up being right, I'm I'm going to call him. I'm going to call this guy. Uh, he's, uh, whatever way he he's going to solve right. this, he'll make a mistake. How do you know? Uh, you Listen, know, uh, do, he, you, are you, up, do you are you do do you feel well, confident? Be honest. Do you feel confident this man will handle this situation in a competent manner? Yes. No. Uh, he surrounded himself uh, with uh, with uh, some of the best minds. And he's not doing what uh, what previous presidents have done, which was just to acquiesce, let this guy do what he wants to do, and all along develop a, a much no, more. No, but you you also program. the first advice that it's would be ignoring. given was you don't give in to the man's ego, and by doing what he did yesterday, he did exactly that. So now Kim Jong Un says, "Oh, I'm going to drop a bomb near Guam." But da, 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 da. come on, now well, what are you going to say, Trump? Near no. Japan, he drops him near Japan. And then he drops them in the sea of Japan. I mean, this guy needs to no, be No, they, they have to come. If you send up a rocket, it has to come down somewhere. So it's going you to come down. send it up. Why not send it up? We send up rockets all the time. We send up rockets. Uh, uh, in fact, the Chinese are going to be are sending up rockets. They're doing space exploration. That's different. His rockets are, are uh, set up to, uh, to have warheads on it. Space exploration is a little bit different. Yeah, up yeah, yeah. You put up, you, you go up there uh, into space, and then you're looking down at Earth, and then you can take a missile and point it anywhere you want to on the face of that Earth from way up above. Yeah, don't we have uh, treaties in place uh, with all of the countries for oh, yeah. space sure not to have do. missiles sure, in space? Sure, sure, we do. All right. I believe that the uh, the Chinese and the Russians and the Americans are honoring that treaty. Well, to begin with, the the Chinese are hardly up there. The Russians are um, are actually well. So far, we've been paying them for the transportation because we don't send people up anymore. Right. You know, well, the space station. We're working in collaboration, uh, and isn't that multi-nation? You know. Th well, to begin with, we're not working like in the same stuff. collaboration. You'd like to make it seem like they all sing, sit around at night singing Kumbaya. Oh, because the name stars. of the space station is the Mir. They didn't name it the Bob. Okay? Yeah, I understand. It's just that 
they're doing uh, experiments. They're they're seeing what it's like to be in space for extended periods of time, mm -hmm. weightless. They're they're, they're, they're see, trying plants. to see where your sperm goes when you jerk off in space. <laughs> Like a snow globe, according to Peter Griffin. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you know, there, there's a big difference between what they're doing and uh, and what the rest of the civilized world is doing, and what Kim Jong Un is doing. There is there are better ways of handling Kim Jong Un. One one was done at the uh, at the uh, uh, UN, UN the other day. Uh, all I'm saying is that Trump served no purpose by his statement except yep. to make this man feel self-important and to and make a threat that he may not be capable of keeping he felt self-important without trump's statement. no and trump felt self-important saying it that's the horrible part exactly about right. it even and he had they lived are it. the same they are the same we have a nut they have a nut no, nah, it's not true. I think our nut is going to be the one that straightens this guy out. Yeah. You know? but it, or kill at, us. At, yeah, he'll straighten him out, but at the cost of soul and who knows what else. Uh, I don't think I don't think King yeah, Johnson. So it's just together. collateral damage. No you worries. know, uh, he doesn't. He ha He has not been able to uh, put a uh, warhead, a nuclear warhead, on his ICBM or a nuclear one. He doesn't need to use nuclear to destroy Seoul with those with those weapons that are 45 seconds away from it. That's a very big uh, metropolitan city. Lots of glass towers, and in 45 seconds, <laughs> that could all be destroyed. Well, you know, the uh, Israel, for instance, Tel Aviv. Do, does it take longer to launch a missile from the Gaza Strip in, into Tel Aviv than it did uh, to launch a missile from North Korea into How, how into long Seoul? does it take to send one from Tel Aviv into the Gaza Strip? We have that answer as well. Well, yeah, because we were able they the uh, blah, blah, shield blah, 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 they blah. had. Well, no, they had a shield. They had a uh, a system that the United States gave them mm -hmm. uh, that shot down those missiles. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, but uh, also, they, also they shot missiles in. If you remember, into the Gaza Strip, killing people. Well, yeah, they they uh, this <laughs> had, has nothing to do with the fact that they were able to shoot down those missiles. Now, what we were talking about was missiles coming in from North Korea to Seoul and having 45 seconds to shoot them down. I think that that's a very similar uh, situation to what the Israelis faced with the missiles that were coming in from Hamas. Uh, regardless of uh, of what uh, retaliatory uh, actions were taken, that, and you and, and and you and Donald Trump are willing to take that risk at the at the uh, at the risk of all those people's lives. And what, you're going to have to do it sooner or later. All right, uh, just let let it roll, let it rip. Then we're here safe. I'm, hey, you're on the I'm west coast, man. I'm in. New, I'm on the east coast. They're going to have to go all the way around to get to me. Yeah. Well, he's so, coming. Yeah. Let me, let me, can I say one thing too here? Yeah, sure. Remember when he first became president, his rallying cry for the campaign was defeat ISIS. So we already defeated ISIS already, and now we're on to North Korea. Because I wasn't isn't sure. It, what isn't it funny how we, we no had eight years ISIS. of we had eight years of Democratic uh, uh, back in the '90s? We had eight years of Bill Clinton. We had six months of a Republican, and we had 9/11. Then we have eight years of a Democrat, and now we're six months into a Republican, and we're about to have another catastrophe. Uh, you forgot about Bosnia, Herzegovina, uh, the the uh, and uh, Clinton sending uh, sending in troops, uh, you know, for what was going on there. Uh, there, there wasn't uh, there wasn't peace uh, during all of those years. It wasn't uh, you know I'm I, talking that selective catastrophe. Memory. I'm talking well, catastrophe. Who says it's going to be a catastrophe. It's going to be a catastrophe, all right. It's going to be a catastrophe for Kim Jong Un if he doesn't uh, stop his uh, his aggressive. Uh, That's aggressive the same actions. rhetoric. That's the same rhetoric that he's using. That's true. Yeah, but what Tony said about the ISIS remark kind of harkens yeah, back. You, so you, know, you know what I think? Uh, but let, let, let me let me. Let me let what the mission accomplished. Yeah. So did we already defeat ISIS? Because I must have missed it. Yes. Hey, hey, Tony, when's the last time you were able to get Lemon Isis? You know? Oh, God. <laughs> well, there's the Lemon Isis <laughs> king of Corona. Who, uh... <laughs> I know. 
Yeah. It's been defeated. No, but let, let me say this, that, Phil, I, you know, you're like so many other Americans. You're looking upon this right now as some kind of disaster movie. You're looking upon this as some kind of movie and the way we solve problems are like they do in the movies, and this ain't no movie. This is something that could end in mutual self-destruction. We uh, had the same issue with Gaddafi, and Reagan put a, uh, uh, put a missile right down his stovepipe. Uh, and that uh, and that stopped him in his tracks. Yes, Mike. Really? Mike. Mike. Mike has his hand up. Mike has his hand up. Not really, Gaddafi. No. You know who got Gaddafi? His own people got him. Oh, today. But when Reagan sent a missile down his stovepipe, he gave up all his weapons of mass destruction and he stopped uh, the ag aggressive yeah, behavior while. he was doing for a while. Oh. For a while. Long enough. Uh, okay, look, well, no, 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 people took him. So that's what Kim Jong Un doesn't want to happen. If he right. gives up his weapons, then the people will come after him. And then when Bush invaded uh, Iraq, uh, Gaddafi again turned over all his stuff and said, "Hey, you know, I, I don't want this." So uh, it, it worked, you know. And uh, you know, the people. Stood yeah, but up it worked and, with and, somebody and, where who had no nuclear weapons and had no retaliatory ability. Well, okay, then, uh, and so and he knew that, and so he had only one choice, and that was to come to the uh, to the peace table, as it were, and to yeah. you know, and, and that's the reason why he did. In this case, we have a guy who thinks he has the capability. You see, I mean, the fact is that if he were to send a missile towards any major American population or whatever. Uh, we certainly would have the ability in that time to shoot it down. That thing doesn't get here in five minutes, you know. We have the time to shoot it down. And once that happens, I mean, come on, North Korea is an ash, and nobody's going to blame us at that point. But you yes. don't. But you don't make threats beforehand. And secondly, the th stupid thing about Kim Jong Un is he's saying, well, in mid-August I'm going to lob a, a missile over near Guam. Well, thanks for telling us. Yeah, you know, who's the bigger idiot here? Well, mm. that's, 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 a, that's why Trump is fighting fire with fire. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah it's just a movie, Phil. It's just a movie. Uh, I don't, I don't think Kim Jong Un has the uh, missiles that are, as Rob said, accurate enough to hit Seoul. Might hit Incheon. He but does. You know, and most of them don't even fire. You know, uh, they they uh, they blow up on the firing pad. Well, a lot of ours did in the beginning, too. And a lot of ours... He does have, he does have 1,100, uh, 1100 pieces of artillery on the border, and Seoul is not that far away. I know. I've yeah. been there. I mean, he Seoul doesn't need, he doesn't need a rocket to, to take out Seoul. Yeah. I've been to Seoul, and I, I, you, know, you can see the DMZ. I, I think it's, what, about 15 miles? Yeah, Something like that. Yeah. yeah. Well, artillery can go that far. You know, the big ones. Yeah. You know, they... They're ready for. They're ready to invade South Korea. They just need a good, good reason uh, all, to. All hope I'm, nobody's going to blow them up. All I'm saying is Kim Jong Un wanted to get his uh, his uh, uh, ego stroked, and he got a big one Trump yesterday, courtesy of Donald Trump. So Donald Trump should be very proud of himself for having given Kim Jong Un exactly what he wanted. Kim Jong Un's been put on notice, uh, and we'll see how okay, tough he Phil, is. Okay, Phil, let's hear what other people he have to say. Launches one more missile. Let, let's see what other people have to say. John, John Wayne, uh, John Rob? Wayne mentality. Yeah, Rob, uh, John. How? Oh, oh, no, oh, Rob, go, go, go. If you no, I, I wanted to slightly lighten up the subject because I found a great thing online about the the ten biggest myths of his father, Kim Jong Il, and they're hilarious. We'll do that later. <laughs> Okay. Uh, well, we might do it now. In, uh, okay, this yeah, is great, but, though. This is yeah, okay. This is from uh, from from Citizen Bureau. Now, these were things I would imagine that were promulgated by the by the uh, Kim Jong. Oh, these are oh, all. Yeah, this was he was Kim Jong Il was yeah. given. I mean, the the Korean North Korean public thinks he is basically a god. First of all, they they think his his birth his official biography says he was born on Korea's most sacred mountain. And when is at the moment of his birth, a new star illuminated the sky, and the seasons changed from winter to spring. In fact, my favorite one is, is Kim Jong Il is a fashion icon. 
In 2010, the North Korean media had decided that Kim Jong-il's fashion had taken the world by storm. Of course, since nobody in, 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 other than the, the high, our higher ups in Korea have the Internet so they can see any of this. They, you know, of course, we don't, you know, if this happened, they don't know, and we certainly know it didn't happen. I also love Kim Jong Il invented the hamburger. He was created, <laughs> he had invented a brand new sandwich, named it Double Bread with Meat. <laughs> I like that one. He was also, and Trump will love this. Kim Jong Il first picked up a golf club in 1994 at North Korea's only golf course. He shot a 38 under par round with no fewer than 11 holes in one. Hey, I yell. Kim the, and the and the most and the most creepiest one, Kim Jong Il never used a toilet. He apparently didn't need to urinate or defecate, uh, which I think he could also control the weather. By the way, and with um, the, but they, he did he that with his, he, did, he, he did that with all the gas that was filling up in his body. I think. <laughs> Born in a manger. <laughs> I just love that. Uh, he was born he in a manger. Right. <laughs> oh, yeah. He also thinks that the Japanese in 1919 stole time from the North Koreans. I don't know why, but but Kim Jong Un decided in 2015, right before oh, Kim Jong Un decided to set the North Korean clocks back by 30 minutes on August 15th. Uh, 2015. So they're 30 minutes behind everyone else. This could be important if they're shooting off missiles, by the way. They're 70 <laughs> years behind everyone else. Well, that and, too. Yeah, you know, what he did was he didn't steal time. He froze them in time. There and, you go. And, you know, the only reason that okay. they uh, think that he's such a fashion plate is none of the other people have clothes. Well, they certainly they, they they have no access to any magazines that would show them otherwise, too, which is the other thing. Or the Internet, by the way. Uh, they say that government officials would like to protect, you know, the Internet from the Korean people. The Korean people, you know, should see this because it's all Western control. Okay. How do the Koreans uh, hack us? You know, they, they, they've hacked our government. They've hacked uh, Sony Pictures. Uh, you know, how, how those do they... Are the upper, those are, the, those are the, 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 the smart North Koreans that actually have access to the Internet, not the, not the rest of the people who can't... Uh, who are somebody said the old line about Curtis Sone wanting to bomb Vietnam back to the Stone mm -hmm. Age? You can't do that with North Korea because they're just barely out of the Iron Age, you know. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, so. Well, no, the old joke. No, the old joke was we'll bomb them back to the Stone Age, which will make them about three years ahead of where they are right now. Like, you know, you know that Curtis LeMay ran for vice president with uh, George Wallace. Yes. Yeah. Oh, there's somebody. Yeah. Oh. yeah he was. So, uh, so with all that news or all of those headlines that we just heard that 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 Kim Jong Il and all of his people believe Donald Trump would have you believe the same thing if you heard that he started his own network and he's got that blonde that used to be the CNN uh, oh, what's yeah. her name McInerney or whatever her name is I like her she's working for the Republican National oh, Committee as well she um, is now on Trump Trump TV or whatever it is, yeah. and he's spouting out. He he would and love to close real down the media, right? And and everything is the real news coming from. Wait, a, no, a wait, wait, wait. I never heard about this Trump TV. Yeah, where's oh, yeah, yeah. where this, Rob? I've heard about it, but I don't know where it is. Oh, I heard the report. I saw. I saw CNN played a, a piece, a clip of McInerney on there doing her thing. She was I she's found Trump out, the, and that's the latest news. The re, the, the latest real news. Yeah, not that real. Ridiculous. Well, you're talking about a dictatorship. I know. This is what he is. Hey, you know, why not control the media? Bloomberg. Russians do. He thinks he's Bloomberg. <laughs> yeah, he just he get rid of wait a minute, wait a minute. Her. Charlene's trying to say something. Yes, yeah, Charlene? No, it's like, you know, he thinks he's Bloomberg. He has his own news. And he's, uh, God, he'll, he'll have uh, pundits and everything, maybe, right? And it'll all be slanted toward him, Trump. But TV, isn't right? he president of the United States? Can he have a Trump network right now? I know. I don't Isn't know. Like, yeah. uh, he's got interest? one. But he's got one. He's got no. one. I mean, well, where, where do I go to find this Trump network? Uh, Bill O'Reilly and uh, there was uh, one other. Uh, uh, Bill O'Reilly to work on it. Uh, well, no, I think he's going to do his own network. And um, okay. you know, at Fox, there was another uh, another sexual uh, scandal. Yeah. Well, well, it, uh, well it, I wouldn't say that because we could get sued by the guy because he's now suing 
I can't remember who, for $50 million, saying that this was costing his, his job and it was all a lie. Yeah. Yeah, so you're just spreading the lie. If, if, no, I'm just saying there was a scandal. That doesn't well, that is, it's, 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 you know, it's a scandal that is under investigation, and he's been suspended. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he has turned around and is suing, I don't know, I think maybe it's CNN, uh, for having reported this, and they supposedly had un... Uh, 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 you know the usual uh, substantiated, unsubs well, no, substantiated. substantiated which, which but un unidentified. Hold on a second. One uh, uh, identified people uh, uh, to uh, uh, something like seven unidentified people who said that the, these various things went on with him. Hmm. So. Sounds like fake news. His name is me. Bowling or something like that. I don't know. Yeah, yeah that's the newest guy. And What's then his name? Black What's, wait a minute. Somebody said his name. What? Eric Bowling. Eric Bowling. Yeah, my mother said she heard something on one of those Good Morning Americas. Yeah. These and when he sues CNN, the TV reports are going to be called Bowling for Dollars. Yeah. <laughs> I thought she was getting And so there was another weird. one that had a three-year oh, affair with uh, uh, a gal. He was a uh, financial uh, reporter at Fox, and uh, he said he had a three-year consensual relationship. She was married. And uh, uh, when she didn't get the position that she wanted at Fox, she made a, a, an accusation, and they suspended him. Uh, it was the a black guy, heavy set black guy. God, uh, I, I'm glad I don't live. Uh, I, I'm glad I'm not a highly sexual person at this point in my life, yeah. because man, when I was having sex with a lot of people back in the day. Any one mm. of those things I could have gotten sued for today. You would have been in the news, Alex. I would have been, yeah, I would have been out of Fox in five the minutes. would have been busy. <laughs> you know, I mean, <laughs> what? You know, I mean, I, I had affairs with uh, married women, you know. Mm. I had, uh, you know, I had certain, but they were all consensual. None of them were non-consensual. Um, a few of them were quite young, but not that young, so, you know. But, I mean, it, it's just, if I did it today, I'd have to have every woman I went out with sign some kind of notification that I wasn't. Right, yeah. Uh, they say they signed it under duress. No. Yeah, you'd I'm, have to do the Derek Jeter thing. you yeah. got to send them a gift basket the next day. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, I mean, uh, it, today anything can be construed as being improper. And and I, I don't know what the answer to that is. You, you know? can look at that door to that guy at Google. Huh? Oh, yeah. He was just stating an opinion in his memo, and he got nailed. He got booted. You, you, oh, they're, bo they're booting people for just saying things on Facebook or on Twitter. Yeah, well, he, was, he wrote a memo to the company that was supposedly, uh, you know, encouraged diverse and conversation, diversity, and that sort of thing. So he basically said that he thought women were getting the short end of the stick because men are more driven and blah, blah, blah. Well, they nailed his ass. And said I, I think. Way. I think. I wish there were HR for the White House, uh, so that well, because geez. because Donald Trump would be out of there so fast, or at least be put on waivers for uh, <laughs> posting tweets that are inappropriate. Alex well, is talking good. about Please. tweets. Uh, yeah, a, a new one or something? Or what? Is it the same old tweets or anything new? No, there's, a, there's about five tweets, two, ten tweets a day from this guy. Because the last tweet I caught up with was, uh, you know, that uh, he's not just having a vacation. He's taking calls and all that. Anything new since that? Well, today he uh, he got he squawked back at Mitch McConnell because Mitch McConnell is starting to make excuses no, and for not getting anything it, well, done. Well, Mitch McConnell, no, Mitch McConnell <laughs> said about him, okay, yeah. that uh, you have to realize that this is a guy who's never been in politics before. And yeah. you know he's not experienced, and he's and immediately Trump goes after Mitch McConnell for saying this. Well, yeah, McConnell he didn't wait, said, he didn't wait five minutes. but what Trump McConnell said, said wait a minute, let me finish what I'm saying. What McConnell said was actually pretty accurate. It wasn't mean or nasty or anything else. It was just saying, hey, the guy hasn't lived in the Washington culture, and he doesn't know. I, oh yeah, I know what it was. He said he doesn't know how slow things work here. 
Yeah, shit doesn't yeah, go as fast as he go, thinks it is he because he thinks fast. he's running a yeah, corporation. But, but, but immediately he goes after Mitch McConnell, which is a big mistake on his part because he needs the Republican Party in order to get his agenda right. done. They're not, doing, they're not doing their jobs either. But on Facebook and Twitter, there's a number of people that are making uh, statements against Trump, and they're getting their accounts suspended. Had, had you seen? Had you seen that? No. Uh, you know, they're getting like 30-day suspensions for uh, uh, their um, their their tweets and uh, and Facebook posts. And is that, and so Facebook is doing that. Facebook is is monitoring what he, people post. Facebook police, yeah. they call that. Yeah, uh, and, and and you know, I'm, now I'm seeing I'm seeing these posts on Facebook and Twitter by other people uh, that uh, are, are yeah. posting this stuff. Now that, it may that not be true because uh, I got a friend that just started Facebook for doing exactly that over here yeah. in Mountain. Here is yeah. maybe I, I actually like Wait. that. I think it's good that we police uh, social media because I think it's a cancer on the. I think social yeah, media well, is a cancer in this world. Now, let me let me say let me tell you a story today, a story, today, a, story today a story today month or two a story today that I felt was a low really low blow Hello. Senator Ron Hello. Johnson uh, he's <laughs> from uh, the Republican of Wisconsin uh, questioned whether Senator John McCain's brain tumor might have affected his judgment when he voted against oh the Republican God. bill to oh, repeal Obamacare Jesus <laughs> really <laughs> Uh, Who said that? This is uh, Ron Johnson of uh, Wisconsin. He was asked by host of a Chicago radio show why the Senate failed to pass a health care bill. I'm not going to speak for John McCain. You know he has a brain tumor right now, and the vote occurred at 1.30 in the morning. Some of that might have factored in. <laughs> He's a fucking idiot. Uh, what factored in is an ass. not a Republican in, in heart. It just just with an, an R in front of his name because he's in Arizona and he couldn't get elected without being a Republican. Yeah, but that's not what we're talking about, Phil. We're talking about this really tasteless comment by this Republican senator. Yeah, maybe, you know, you always have to one, make you always have to Trump. make an excuse for it by veering us off into the ditch with some comment about something else. And well, McCain really was a liberal, whatever. No, the fact is, this guy is saying that because he has a brain tumor, he wasn't competent to take the make the vote. And there's a lot of red ties over there that are just jumping the ship, I think, slowly but surely. Yeah, that's... Well, maybe well, they should. Is there anything going on with health care? Let's just say that they're losing confidence in what they thought was their confidence. Well, nothing's going on with health care, Charlene, because it's been well, pr pretty well. Because you said McCain, that was the last thing that happened, right? Is he saved us from... Having, yeah, but this guy, true. this senator, is saying it's because basically he was brain damaged. It was right. be, it but was because is because the Republicans tried lied to everybody and said they had a replace a replacement bill instead of just let's just pass anything to say we passed something, yep. which is the biggest bullshit reason. How you can respect that, Phil, is beyond me. Hmm. What's uh, going to happen now? I heard. The I Senate wasn't. I, you know, I wasn't familiar with the bill that they were voting on. I didn't think that it was Nobody a good was. bill, uh, but isn't it going to return now? And they're they're going to put through the uh, the um, Congress uh, congressional bill uh, since the bill no. In, now in the no. no now now they're working bipartisan wise to get something done. They're That's actually heard, doing right. that. No, well, that would be good. Something they should have done seven years ago. Right. No. Who's working on it, though? Who? I guess Trump. <laughs> no, no, Trump no, isn't Trump working on it. Nothing he has nothing to do, to do with, with it. it. Nothing yeah. to do with it. Yeah. Trump yeah. just wants to sign something. Well, he wants the glory, not the work. Well, he, he supposedly, to supposedly, supposedly it. yeah, and and yet he it is almost a known fact that he didn't he didn't read any of those bills. Right. Do you know that in Utah well, you didn't, they just you didn't lost answer another? My, you didn't answer my question. I just made a comment, Phil, and then you immediately go to something else. He didn't else. read any of those bills. He didn't read I any didn't, of those I bills. I didn't dispute it. I, I am not disputing it. What do I need to comment on it for? You know, he probably didn't read the bill. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, but the thing is, they celebrate. Remember the champagne and the rose garden and all yeah. that? And then okay. somebody must have said to him, you know, 
this bill is A, B, C, D, and then he re- he went and he called it what? What did he call it? Heartless or yeah? yeah. Uh, let me uh, I mean, let me see on. here. Uh, Brian's has uh, got his hand up. Brian's All got right. his hand. Uh, going back to what you were saying, you all were saying about sexual harassment laws and you know uh, living a promiscuous lifestyle in this digital day and age in which everything and everyone is under surveillance. It seems with social media and whatnot. Mm-hmm. I just posted a picture on the uh, Skype message board, but I'll read it. It's real pithy and quick. But, uh, you know, South Park episodes where Kyle or some or Stan say, oh, you know, I learned something today. Well, you know, I kind of parodied that. This is from a while ago, maybe over a year ago. And it goes, you know, you know, I learned something today. If marital laws become any stricter, then you'll need to provide proof of income, insurance, a DNA sample, a semen sample, fingerprints, all 11 of them, an affidavit and a sworn deposition before you'll even get to take your first lick or stick. For that matter, <laughs> South Park. Hello, Jack Bishop. <laughs> <Don't care. laughs> that's Look a what you come act into act here. <laughs> that's a tough act to follow. You know, the great thing about GabNet is even if you work here, you got to listen. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Who works here? I didn't know. <laughs> I, 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 the idea of work means that you do something, you get paid for it. Gabnet bucks, right? You mean that fifty thousand dollars a week of Gabnet bucks isn't worth anything to well, me? You can if you can get them cashed, they're worth something. Well, along those same lines, yeah. Did you guys hear the story today about the chicken across Uh-oh. the road at, at yes. the White House? Yes. Oh, there was that. Oh, yeah, the uh, big inflatable chicken. With the, with the uh, listen, let me yeah. hold on. Hold on a second. I gotta add uh, 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 Jeff to the group, but unfortunately, sure. nobody can see Jeff because he is all the way over on the side. And uh, Jeff, are you there? I, I can see him. Yeah. I, know, I know. I can't. I can't see him here. I have to. I have to do this and um, make it. Well, see his still picture. Huh? I see the still picture, but I don't see yeah. his video. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Probably so, Jeff, can I say good night to you? Because I really can't fit you in right now. Oh, okay. It's just too many people, and it's we only got. Drop off? We only got. If you'd like to, Tony, because yeah, th- then I could fit him in. Okay. Okay. Good night. Two right. more. Thank you very much, Tony. We appreciate that. Okay. Let me see here. Let me remove this person from the group, and then we can Bye, do Tony. this. <laughs> And there we go. Turn your camera on, Jeff. Turn your camera on, Jeff, yeah. since we accommodated you. Uh, uh, Jeff, can you hear us? Yeah, it's going to take me a minute here. Uh, okay. Uh, anyway, uh, let me see. A here. little problem. You having a problem? Yeah. yeah. Gee, we got well, rid of Tony for you. We can hear him anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can, uh, by the way, can anybody explain something to you? I was talking about to Bubbles about this earlier. Uh, we're go- I'm going away next week uh, for three days, we're going up to Vermont. So Jack will be doing the show on Friday. And um, uh, we, I looked into renting a car and maybe driving up there as opposed to two plane tickets, which you know can cost a lot of money. Uh, mm-hmm. But it turned out it was cheaper for us to fly because three days of uh, renting a Hertz car would have cost me uh, approximately $750. Wow. So I then checked and I said, uh, put in, well, I'm going to be going from this time to this time. And I made it a sure. week. And it only would cost $300 for the week. Yeah. That but doesn't you, make sense. If you come back early it'll cost you another $500 to park it for those four days. No, no, but here's what I'm <laughs> you gonna, can always no, bring it This back is what we're going to do next year, year is we're going to rent the car for a week, and then we're going to go to Vermont, see our friends for three days, and then take a little vacation up in that area of the world and come back a week later and drop the car off. Go by train. It's probably cheaper. No, yeah. no, but, yeah. but I, you can't take side roads with the train. You can't have well, little adventures with the joints? train. You go, you're going up into that area to get your opioids? No, I'm going up there to kiss Bernie Sanders' ass, okay? <laughs> I'm going up to Burlington. I'm going to be right in his territory. Yes, uh, 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 John. Me. <laughs> yeah. No. As, an, as a fellow New Yorker who has rented cars, 
um, uh, to go up to that area because I went to school up there. So I go up. For, you know, I've done that, and the, I found at least once if I was if if, if I was going to rent for more than three days, the weekly rental was better, and you can bring it back before the end of the week. They don't care. It's just that you uh, it's, it's available for that time. The thing is, uh, check check dollar rent a car because they have uh, they have some special New York City rates which are actually pretty good for three or four day things i think they expect you're going to be just driving around the city but there's unlimited mileage i found they were the best overall deal day to day than hertz or avis were way out of the you know uh, budget and budget and dollar were yeah, better but, but nevertheless have, they, nevertheless you know, pick it up. three yeah, three hundred cars but still three hundred dollars yeah, sounds correct. reasonable to me seven hundred and fifty dollars for four days less seems ridiculous. Yes, uh, Jack. Well, believe it or not, I actually heard something about this years ago. The reason being, it costs less to rent during the week than on the weekend hmm. is because of the fact that most people who rent cars rent them for business and uh, they figure like this, we're going to make the money in volume during the week, and it's kind of a screw you on the weekend. What do you mean, it's, it's, what do you mean it's a screw it's you the on the weekend? The, the weekend the price thing. from Friday until Monday was going to be $750. Where if I'd taken that for another four extra days, no matter what day of the week I started that week, it was only 300 mm -hmm. Oh yeah. If you get a hotel here in in the Bay Area during the week, it's going to cost you twice as much as it would on a weekend. Right. Yeah, but this because but this is a weekend. Wait a minute, but this is a re weekend rental we're talking about here. Yeah. Mm. Also, it's the opposite. Yeah. But also, where, but it matter. also depends on you can get them cheaper at, depending on where you get them as well. If you get them at the airport, they're oh, easier yeah. compared to yeah. so they cost less. No, they cost more. All, all I'm saying is that nah, there is the no opposite. there is no logical Not reason. Newark. There's no logical reason for this. You no, know? there isn't. Oh, true. Because they and won't be able to rent that car for the rest of that week. And the, it's only the costing like, for the month or what? two. The reason might be because they have to staff an office on the weekend where if they were just renting during the week. No, but if I'm it, renting it, it starting on a weekend, what does that mean? I mean, all I'm saying is is that no matter when I start renting this thing, whether it's the middle of the week or on Saturday, a week is going to be about less than half the cost of yes. three days. No, but it's for that Trump owns the ARP discount. <laughs> and he, knows your pol he knows your politics. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes. Is, yes. Uh, 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 is Brian <laughs> waving his hand? Uh, no, I was just stretching. For oh, did you right. throw the discounts at them, ARP or anything like oh, that? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I even oh, yeah. threw my serious. Uh, well, something. I even get a, I even get a serious XM discount. <laughs> yeah, it's it, well. Sometimes I know that sometimes when I used to rent, for, try to rent a car through my company when yeah. I was working, more. it was no. more. No way. And I could rent it myself on the side for less. Yeah. Hmm. And uh, if you belong to, with your credit card, uh, if you belong to any of those uh, affinity clubs for the different rental car places, Alex, do you have a American Express Platinum? No. Oh, uh, because with that, you, you can get uh, several uh, free affinity programs so that you get better rates. There's, there, there's Jeff. We in the last uh, seven minutes, eight minutes of the show, we see him. I know. However, you're in the dark, so we can't see your face. Yeah, I could do that too. You're backlit. You're back. <laughs> All right, hold on. Uh, <clears throat> we'll see him before the show's over. Uh, well, I just want to tell anybody I'm not going to be here next week. Why? What are you going to be doing? I'm going up to Maine. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, so that is. Well, I'm going so to the third person I've heard of going to Maine. Really? Yeah, I got a friend that's over there now. I got friend, a cousin that lives there. that wants me to come out, and somebody else was going there. Now hmm. Jeff is. Well, I'm going to be gone on Friday anyway, Jeff, and I'll be up near where you are, which is I'm going to be in Vermont. So. That's right. We'll only be uh, thirty miles. 30 so it's, miles a, away. it's a long way to go to get an ice cream cone, but you know, um, 
Well, 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 I think Jerry's has some sort of uh, stuff in their thing that's uh, is it causing cancer or one of those kinds of things? The, I don't know. Uh, it's causing people to move to Vermont. No, actually, the the, <laughs> the actual the original Ben and Jerry's store is is in uh, Burlington. And no, but I heard is the original. Yeah, I heard a news factory. report last week that Ben and Jerry's had uh, some sort of chemical in their yeah. uh, in their ice cream that uh, was uh, harmful. Has really? anybody else heard this? I don't this? give a damn. It's so damn good, I'll die with you. <laughs> exactly. You're and there's so damn little of it that smile on your face cares. Yeah. It's laced with arsenic or something? <clears throat> I'm not sure what the chemical <laughs> was. Their only effects were conservatives and Republicans. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> Well, yeah, but we get revenge just by raising the rent car prices on Democrats. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Touche. Yeah. Uh, no. Traveling 300, 600, 6,000 miles to Maine just for the lobster, I, I hear it's worth it alone. So. There's a lot of lot. <laughs> Seafood and all that. That's right. I was up in no. Portland, Maine. My ex-wife, Ronnie, uh, was living in Portland, Maine, and I went up there. And uh, she took me to this place, and it was actually, it was on CBS Sunday morning a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Red's, the lobster roll. Red's Lobster Rolls, yeah. Best yeah. lobster roll I've ever had in my life. Yeah. It was just amazing. What happened was I never had a lobster roll, and so I had this thing, and I went, this is amazing. She says, yeah. I said, but I've never had any other lobster rolls. This could suck. I don't know, but this is, is good. It? And then I came back to New York. And I went someplace that had lobster rolls, and Red's was great. You know, uh, don't they put like a whole lobster? Yeah, they put a whole lobster. Yeah. In the bread, which is like bread, which is uh, uh, been buttered, been buttered, and you know, toasted, and then doubled Sliced over, open, yeah. and they put all the. Oh, it's just oh god, it's wonderful. Yeah. So if you're ever right. up near Portland, uh, Portland, Maine. Go to Red's Lobster. It's not in Portland, Maine. It's in a, t a town right outside of Portland, Maine. It took us about a half hour to get there. And then there are poor folks like me who live in the middle of the country, and going to Long John Silver's is the closest thing we get to fish. It is not even. Yeah, like <laughs> yeah. well, no, you've been closing a lot of them in my neck of the woods, though. Don't you have Red Lobster uh, there? You got to have Red Lobster there. They're not very. Yeah, it's not real. Don't go to Red Lobster like in Olive Garden. Maine. Is Italian. <laughs> They're real lobsters in Maine. Actually, the Olive Garden. I got to tell you something quickly because Brian said oh, something pejorative go. about uh, 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 Olive Garden. Uh, my business manager's daughter went to work for Olive Garden, and at a certain point, when they were getting a terrible reputation for this Italian food, they decided to hire. Uh, Italian chefs and they flew a lot of their workers over to Italy and let them work with these Italian chefs and so their yeah. food supposedly uh, yeah. is quite good now yeah, yeah well I was just where was this Olive Garden yeah. yeah I we have one that I could walk to right here in this apartment we were there about three weeks ago they must have forgot everything they learned from the Italians. I had a pasta dish that I couldn't even I could eat pasta I don't really care this was like paste it was the worst well, it's thing paste I ever ate. <laughs> and you know what? Uh, that's horrible food. There wasn't anything I liked about that meal. Nothing. Hey, Rob, what'd they call that dish? Bofengu? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they could have been they called like that. this to you? <laughs> well, I'll, have to I'll have to invite you all to, to Dallas because my dear friend, <clears throat> Mr. Wright, Mr. Extreme Wright, Phil Meyer, took me to... Uh, Wolf Lodge, was it not? Uh, it was uh, in that hotel Yeah, uh, where I was staying. Uh, and the best steak I ever had in my life. It was good. It, you know, yep. made me want to go out and kiss a cowboy. <laughs> anyway, there's, oh, there's, 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 there's the theme. Yeah. There's the theme. Uh, 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 hold on. Hold on. Oh, hey, hey, hold on. I'm talking. Uh, oh, goodness, I gotta go. Bye. Yeah, you gotta go. Bye, Jack. Jack's gotta go do his show. He's next with the uh, intersection, by the way, with Amy uh, and Manuel. And uh, you might, uh, some of you, call him and you know, keep him busy, keep him honest, uh, make him earn those gabnet bucks. Uh, you know, definitely. But, but anyway, hey, listen. Uh, I want to thank you, Scott. I want to thank you, Rob. As always, Brian. Great to have you here. I loved your. Uh, 
some of your stuff tonight. John Rockwell, thank you for everything you wanted to know about Kim Jong Il. Jeff mm-hmm. Stein, have a good time up in uh, up in Maine. Uh, although you're here for a couple more days, uh, Mike, have a good day. You, Phil, thank you, you as always. Kevin, thank you, and of course, Charlene, always good to see you. Everybody, why don't you just wave bye bye to everybody? Thanks for being with us tonight. Okay, everybody. All right, that's it. Uh, that's all she wrote for the uh, for the uh, show tonight. Uh, we'll be back again tomorrow night, same time, uh, same station in life, and all that. But I always say, stay tuned for uh, the uh, uh, <laughs> the the. <laughs> The intersection, which is next over most of the same station. I'll see you tomorrow. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her the on the air light is on and I love her. Okay? Bye.